welcome to Prime Factors. Um, just before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. If you just check the description below for a download link, you'll be able to work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we should start with what a prime factor actually is. Um, and it's quite simply a factor of a number, which is also a prime. Um, and the key thing about prime factors, they're really, really important because actually every single number can be expressed as a product of prime factors. So if we know what the prime factors are, then we can take the product. We can times those numbers together and we can make it the total value. So we're going to do that with a few examples just to begin with. And I'm going to show you how you can set this out to get the best answer possible. So first of all, I'm going to look at the number 36. And what we do is we use what is known as a prime factor tree or prime factor decomposition. Decomposition meaning to break down. Um, and so what we do is we look for a factor of 36, which is also a prime number. So the smallest prime number, which is a factor of 36, would be 2. So 2 goes into 36, and we need to think how many times that actually happens. So 2 goes into 36 18 times. We then need to keep breaking down. Now you'll notice I've circled the number two. That is because it is one of our prime factors. 18 is not prime, so I'm leaving that as it is. I'm going to break down the number 18 again. So we need to look for the prime number, which goes into 18. Well, again, the smallest prime number that goes into 18 is two. So I'll put a circle around it. And two goes into 18 nine times. Now, 9 is not a prime number, therefore, I'm not going to circle it. And again, I'm going to take a little branch off each one. And so 9, the smallest prime number which goes into 9, is 3. I'm going to put a circle around it because it's a prime number. How many times does nine, uh, 3 go into 9? Well, it goes in 3 times. Now, that is another prime number. Because we have managed to get um, to the point where we've broken down the number into two prime factors, that is our suggestion that we have completed the task. Now, I said we could write the number as a product of primes. Well, this is where the tree comes in. The number 36 can be written as a product of each of these prime factors that we've circled. It is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And if you want to check that, 2 times 2 is 4. If you times that by 3, it's 12. If you times that by 3, it's 36. It works. Um, now, you may be asked in these uh, situations to give your answer in index form. That just means if you've got more than one of any of the prime factors that you should use a power to show that. And so 2 times 2, well that is 2 times by itself, so it's 2 squared. And 3 times 3, it's 3 times by itself, so 3 squared. 2 squared times 3 squared. That is the index form. We're going to do the same for the number 45. And so each time we branch off and we try to find the smallest prime number, which is a factor of the value. So a factor of 45. Well, in this case, 2 isn't going to work because it's not in an even number. So we need to try the next prime number, which is 3. 3 does go into 45, and it goes in 15 times. Now, don't worry here if you didn't spot that 3 goes into 45. If you looked at that and thought 5 goes in, well, you'd be correct, and you would still work in exactly the same way. You would just start with 5 and 9 at the start. But we're going to continue here with the number 15. Well, 3 goes into 15, and it goes in 5 times. 5 is a prime number, so we can circle that. We've com uh, broken it down into two prime factors, therefore we are at the end. So 45 must be 3 times 3 times 5. And again, if we wanted that in index form, well, the only part where we've got more than one of the same number is the 3s. We've got 3 squared times 5. And lastly, we're going to look at number 32. So this one is an even number this time. So we know that 2 will definitely work. And 2 goes into 32 16 times. 
16 is an even number, so we can go again with 2. 2 goes in 8 times. 8 is an even number, so again, 2 will go in. We'll go in 4 times. And 4 is an even number, so 2 will go in, and it will go in twice. There's our prime number, so we'll give it a circle. 32 is therefore, as a product of primes, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and if we want that in index form well they're all the same value they're all twos so that is going to be 2 and how many have we got 1 2 3 4 5 so 2 to the power of 5 so now that we can find the product of primes we're going to use this um, to help us to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of a pair of numbers in this case 36 and 45. Now we've already looked at 36 and 45, we've already discovered that 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 and that 45 is 3 times 3 times 5. Now you might notice there that I have left this um, in the original form, not the index form, that's just to make it a little bit easier for me as we work along. Because what we need to do if we're thinking about common factors, we're actually going to draw ourselves a Venn diagram. The Venn diagram allowing us to show what is common between two different things. And so we have the factors of 36 in one circle and the factors of 45 in the other circle and then we have an overlapping section in the middle which are going to be the factors of both. And so what we need to do is start in that central section. We want to find out what are factors of both numbers. Well if we look at 36 it has a 2 as one of its factors. 45 doesn't. So neither of these 2's are going to work. But this 3 can be paired in both cases. So because they overlap, they come together and we have a 3 in the middle. There is also another 3 in both lists. And so they come together and overlap to make a 3 in the centre. The other values are only um, factors of their original number. So the 2's are only factors of 36. The 5 is only a factor of 45. Now this at the moment doesn't look that helpful but what we're going to look at is how we can use this, uh, this Venn diagram to find the two values, the HCF and the LCM. So the HCF needs to be the highest common factor. Well the common factors are the put, uh, ones which are in the center. And so this central piece of our uh, diagram is what we need. The highest common factor is going to come from the numbers that are in the center multiplied together. So three times three, our highest common factor is nine. The lowest common multiple. Now this one is a little bit more tricky. The lowest common multiple, we want to know the first number which is in the 36 times table and the 45 times table. And in order to do that, what we actually need is the entire diagram. So every value needs to come together in order to find the lowest common multiple. So we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. And so for this one, we can, uh, we're going to have to just keep working our way through the values. Now, one thing that is quite helpful here, if we look at the first four values, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, well, they are 36, because there it is, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So it is 36 times 5. And if we work that out, well, 30 times 5 is 150, and 6 times 5 is 30, and so the lowest common multiple is 180. The smallest number, which is in the 36 times table and the 45 times table, is 180. Okay, so for our final example, uh, we've been asked to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of 24 and 30. 
Now, I will say um, there are other ways of going about this. If you really wanted to, you could just find the factors of 24 and the factors of 30 and have a check, see which one is the biggest. And for your lowest common multiple, you could make lists of your 24 times table and your 30 times table and see which one is the smallest number which is in both lists. But basically, this method is um, in order for us to deal with slightly bigger numbers um, where we might not be quite as com uh, comfortable uh, making those lists. So we're going to use the prime factor decomposition. So we're going to do that for each number. So 24, well 24 is an even number. So 2 is going to be a factor and 2 goes in 12 times. 12 is also an even number. So 2 is going to go in again. 2 and 6. 6 is an even number. So 2 will go in and it goes in 3 times. 3 is prime, so we've come to the end. 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. For the number 30, well, 30 is an even number, so 2 will work. 2 and 15. 15 is not an even number, so we'll need to find a different prime number that goes in. Well, 3 will go into 15, so it'll go in 5 times. 5 is also prime, so there's the end of that one. So 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. So now we want to put that into our Venn diagram. We have a circle for the factors of 24, a circle for the factors of 30, and all we need to do is find where the common factors are. And so there is a 2 in both of our lists, so we can place that in the centre. There is also a 3 in both of our lists, so we'll put that in the centre as well. The other values, well for 24, the 2 and the 2, they don't match with anything in the 30 list, and so we'll have a 2 and a 2. And the 5 in the 30 list doesn't have anything to match with, so we'll pop it in the right hand side. And we want to find now our highest common factor. So the highest common factor, remember that is always the overlap in the diagram. And so the highest common factor is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So the um, largest number, which is a factor of both 24 and 30, is 6. The lowest common multiple Again, we need to remember that the lowest common multiple requires the entire diagram. So all of the Venn diagram is used for the lowest common multiple. And that is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And again, if you want to look at this, let's look at the far end here. The 2 times 3 times 5. Well, if we have a look, that is the number 30. So this is 2 times 2 times 30. And 2 times 2 is 4 times 30 is 120. And so that is telling me the smallest number, which is in the 24 times table, and the 30 times table is 120. And so we end with the exam question. And this came from the Edexcel paper in June 2018. And it was on both the foundation and higher paper, um, paper 2. So it is a calculator question. And so when we come to uh, dealing with these questions, the cal a calculator may well be useful. Um, but basically, um, we start off with the question, find the lowest common multiple, or LCM, of 40 and 56. Now, there is no indication here that they want us to use uh, prime factors. Often in exam questions, um, this would be the second part of the question where you've already been asked to find um, the prime factor decomposition of um, a number. So in this case, it may actually be worthwhile just making a list. You've got a calculator, so you can just write down 40 and 80 and 120 and so on and keep uh, making lists of your 40 times table and your 56 times table. What I'd like to do with using the prime factors just to show um, that it's quite straightforward. So with 40, well that will be 2 and 20, 2 and 10, 2 
and 5 and for 56 that would be 2 and well, half of 56 is 28 it will be 2 and 14 it will be 2 and 7 7 is a prime number so we've come to the end draw our Venn diagram what are the common factors this time so what is in both lists well this 2 is in both of them this 2 is in both of them this 2 is in both of them and the 5 is left on its own the 7 is left on its own and so if we think about the LCM we want the entire diagram so it's 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 and again if we look at this very first piece the 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 well that is 40 that is the first number times 7 40 times 7 is 280 the second part of this question though is most certainly all definitely about prime factors because we've been given two values we've been told that a is 2 cubed times 3 times 5 and that b is 2 squared times 3 times 5 squared and so these are two values which have been written in index form of the prime factors and it wants us to find the highest common factor of a and b now what you could do is again as it's a calculator question you could work out what 2 cubed times 3 times 5 is and what 2 squared times 3 times 5 squared is and see if you can work out the factors but the other way would be just to think about what we've done with our Venn diagrams previously if we think about a that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 B is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 and so if I were to fill in a Venn diagram of these two numbers well there is a 2 in both lists so it would be in the middle there is a 2 in both lists so it would be in the middle there is a 3 in both lists so that would be in the middle and there's a 5 in both lists so it'll be in the middle the only thing that will be left over for a would be that extra number 2 and the only thing that will be left for b would be the extra number 5 and the question was asking for the highest common factor where do we find the highest common factor in the middle of the diagram and so the highest common factor of those two numbers will have to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 and if we work that out 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12 times 5 is 60 and so the highest common factor of those two numbers is 60.